Good morning, world. I am Judy, your web-based therapist, making therapy accessible and convenient for our clients in Florida and New York, and of course, sharing information worldwide. Today, I want to talk about five things that can sometimes happen that can lead to a relationship falling apart. A lot of times we see, or couples, even couples experience this themselves, where they see the relationship falling apart, and it's almost a surprise of what is going on because we used to be so good together, or things used to be so good, but we don't pay attention to the things that happen in throughout the relationship that may lead to the relationship falling apart. So today we're talking about those five things or five things that can happen and lead to that. But before I get into that, I want to take a quick moment and say, if you are subscribed, thank you so much for being a part of a world of awesomeness. And if you're not yet subscribed, please click the subscribe button below so that you can join all this awesomeness and remember to click the bell so that you are notified when I post new videos so that you don't miss anything. And of course, if you'd like to purchase one or three of my books, there's also a link below that will take you to a site that shows you all your different options of places where you can get one or three of my books. Okay, let's get back to it. The first one is using others as a benchmark or comparing your relationship to others. Especially in this, these days of social media, we get to see the 97th attempt at getting that perfect candid shot, right? And you don't know, we see snapshots of a person's relationship, but we don't know what the relationship is. We see snapshot of a person's life, but we don't know what's going on behind closed doors. They often tell you that um, you don't know a person's life. You don't know what goes on in a person's life until you live with them. And when we're seeing these quick moments that happen either on social media or even when you're interacting with, those, with somebody for a couple of hours, you don't really get to experience and see who those people are and how things are going in their lives. So it's important to make sure that we are not comparing our relationship and making ex expectations of your relationships or demands of your relationship and your partner based on what you're seeing other people doing. Because your relationship is different from anyone else's because you and your partner are different from everyone else. So make sure that whatever benchmark you're setting for yourself, whatever goals and tools, whatever you're doing for your relationship, you're basing on you and your partner and not, you know, comparing to what others are doing or comparing your relationship to others. Two, being passive about your relationship or, using, or just putting it on, on autopilot and just, hey, it's going to keep going because, you know, we started out so well. It is true that a strong foundation help keep, helps get a relationship off to a good start, but relationships take work. You can't just put it on autopilot and just assume that it's going to keep doing what it does or what, it's, what you want it to do. Even a car, when you put your car on autopilot, you don't just put the car on autopilot and you fall asleep. You stay behind the wheel and you sit there and you're guiding and you're there and you're engaging with that vehicle. You're making sure that, hey, I don't miss that exit, that I don't miss that turn. So your relationship should be, an, there should be active participation in your relationship. There should be active engagement in your relationship. You can't just leave it on autopilot and not nurture it and not take care of it and expect that it's going to continue growing. Your relationship is not a plastic plant. It is a living, breathing entity. It's so because it has two living, breathing, growing humans involved. So make sure that you're not just leaving it there and hoping that it does what you want it to do. You need to be fully engaged, taking the steps, taking the actions, doing, fully participating. God, you need to be the driver of that relationship or the drivers of that relationship, you and your partner, to make sure that your relationship goes in the direction that the two of you want it to go and not just, you know, hope that, hey, it goes the way I want. Three, making excuses or allowing other obligations to get in the way. A lot of times people say they don't have time to do all these things that they should, that they know they should do as a cop couple, that they would like to do as a couple. They don't have time to do all these things because there's life, there's all sorts of obligations. There are all sorts of um, things, the requirements that are being placed on them. However, your relationship should be a priority. And all those little things that, can't, that are there that, yes, they require attention. Yes, your, 
Yes, you definitely need to invest the time in raising and taking care of your children. Yes, you definitely need to make time to take care of and, um, you know, do your work, go to work every day and do your job. All those things are important. But the thing, the, what makes them different is that if you stop showing up to work, at some point you probably might get fired. But if you just stop showing up at you, in your relationship, it may take longer for you to act for your partner to decide, hey, you know what, this partner is not showing up, so maybe we shouldn't keep them. There, there are a lot. We all only have the same 24 hours in a day, 168 hours um, in a week. However, what is a priority to you has to find a space in those 168 hours every week. What is a priority to you has to have a space in your 24 hours. So it's not just, hey, you know what? My husband and I are not fighting, so we're good. No, Some, you have to take the time to nurture the relationship. It gets to the point where you're passing ships. Passing ships don't necessarily make a relationship. If you're basing your how well your relationship is doing just by the fact that, hey, at least we're not fighting, you're not, in, you're not quite there yet. It's important that you're not making, you're not allowing other things, other parts of life to push your relationship out of the way. Because if you keep setting the relationship aside to take care of everything else, eventually you may find that, hey, everything else is taken care of. And when you think that, okay, now I'm going to give my relationship some time, it may be too late. Your partner may have already disconnected. Your partner may have already moved on. or yeah, a lot of things can happen. So it's important that you're not just, yeah, there, we all have the same 168 hours every week or same 24 hours every, every day. Make sure that you're taking the time and making a priority to um, take care of your relationship. Four, accepting or believing that things are supposed to fade. That's not true. Your relationship can and should still be passionate all the days. You should be 80 years old chasing your spouse around the house and all, you know, having flabby things all over the place. Your relationship should stay exciting. There's nothing that says that it has to fade. The reason a relationship fades is because people stop investing in it, because people start, stop engaging, people stop doing those things that kept it exciting at the beginning. And of course, we know when a relation, if your relationship fades a little bit too much, then the relationship actually disappears altogether. So you don't want to take the chance of, okay, let's see how much I can let it fade before we actually end up having to separate because we no longer like each other or we're no longer that's those same people. It do, relationships or don't have to fade. The excitement can continue. The excitement can continue 80 years into your marriage and, you know, where you're hobbling together to try to do whatever it is that you do as a couple. But just make sure that you're engaging. You're doing those same fun, exciting things that got you attracted and engaged and interested in each other at the beginning so that they keep in, you know, when you're in your 80s and when you're in your 90s and, you know, when you're sharing, um, putting your teeth in the same cup, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, okay, I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> Five, not being forthcoming or not being true about your needs and your wants. Your partner is the one who's supposed to meet those needs for you. Your partner is supposed to help you meet those needs. Your partner is the one that's supposed to help execute those wants. If you're not being forthcoming, if you're not being true with them, about what it is that you would like, about what it is that you're expecting, it's going to be really hard for them to deliver. If your partner doesn't know that you want X, Y, Z, they probably will not guess it, especially if it's not a discussion that you have had. And sometimes even if you've had the, the discussion, that doesn't mean that it's going to remain. It's up to you. It's important that you are continuing to share with your partner what you want, what you need, what you expect, what you would like to see in your relationship so that they can help you get that, help that be delivered, help you find that in your relationship. When people fail to do that, 
it often leads to things like, you know, infidelity because my partner is not meeting this need that I have. So I have to, I'm going out to find someone outside of the relationship to meet it. But you're not giving your relationship a chance to deliver on the things that you want. So take the time, share with your partner, let them know, hey, these are the things I want. These are the things I like. Even if you think that it's weird, even if you think that they might judge you, they probably, you know, they've seen you naked, right? So just talk about it, share it, be forthcoming, be truthful about it and give your partner and give your relationship a true shot. Okay, so let's do a quick recap. One, using others as a benchmark or as a comparison because you're different, your partner is different from anyone else you guys know and your relationship is different. So set goals, set um, whatever benchmarks based on you and your partner and not other people or what you see other people do. Two, being passive about, uh, passive about your relationship or putting it on autopilot. Relationships take work. Take the time, invest, engage, and participate and fully guide your relationship to where you want it to go. Three, making excuses for or allowing um, other obligations to get in the way. No, your relationship should be a priority. Just as you take the time to prioritize taking care of children, to prioritize going to work, you should be prioritizing taking care of and, and nurturing your relationships. Four, accepting or believing that, hey, yes, things are supposed to fade. No, they're not. They fade when you, fa when you fail to nurture them, when you fail to keep them exciting. But in order for a relationship to be exciting into your 80s and 90s, you have to keep doing the things that you did when you first met that had your relationship be exciting. And finally, not being true about that being true or forthcoming about what you want or what you need. In order for your partner to deliver, in order for your relationship to de deliver on your wants and needs, you're going to have to be able to step up, speak up, and let them know. Let the partner, your partner know, this is what I want. This is what I would like. And let them judge you a little bit, maybe. Hopefully, they won't judge you, but hey, they might. But this is your partner. This is the person you're sharing a life with. So give them a shot. Um, yeah, as always, if you or someone you know happens to be going through something that's more than you can handle, please remember that there are professionals like myself who are available, able, and willing to help and are even providing remote services who can assist with whatever you may have going on. So please figure out who those people are in your community so that if you need them, you can reach out and get the help that you need. And that is all we have for today. Good morning, world. Have an awesome day.